we're going to be continuing our lesson fundamental series today. And today we're going to be talking about learning how to read music. Now learning how to read music is just like learning how to read any other language. It's going to take a lot of practice and a lot of dedication to kind of master it, but we just use a simple alphabet like we do in English and just a placement on what we call the music staff. And that's all we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and get started with the music staff. Now here on the whiteboard, we have the music staff drawn out. Now it's made up of five lines. Line one, line two, three, four, and five. And then the space is in between the line. So this would be space one, space two, space three, and space four. So we're going to use these different lines and spaces as placeholders for the musical alphabet. Let's go and talk about the musical alphabet right now. So the musical alphabet starts on A, just like our alphabet in English does. We're actually only going to go up to G. So we only have seven letters in the musical alphabet. So as you can see here, we start on A. And then I have it written here on a clock because you can really go in either direction from A to G. So this would be going forward through time, and this would be going backwards through time, or moving down on the music staff. Now in order to know where the notes go, or the letters go, on the staff, we use what are called clefs as guideposts to where we start the alphabet. Pictured here is going to be what we call the treble clef. Now the instruments that use the treble clef would be instruments like violin, flute, clarinet, trumpet, saxophone, and many different other instruments. Now when we see this, we're actually going to start the alphabet on the second space. So if we count it from the bottom, this would be space one. And this is going to be space two. So I'm going to go ahead and just write the letter A right there on the second space. Now from here, all we're going to do is we're going to alternate line space, line space, um, going up through the alphabet. So I was on the second space here. I'm going to go up to the next line, and this is going to be B. So I'll just write a B here. And then we're just going to go forward in the alphabet, continuing on. So I'm going to have C, and then I'll have D on the next line. On the next space, I'll have E. And then on this top uh, line, I'm going to have F. Now to go down on the staff, we're going to go backwards in time, or we're going to move backwards through the alphabet. Since A is the beginning of our alphabet, we need to go back to the very last letter of the musical alphabet, which is going to be G. So this second line here is going to be G. From there, we just continue on backwards through the alphabet. So after, or before G, we have F. And then before F, we have E. So this bottom line here is going to be E. Now we have a couple of shortcuts that we um, can use. We're going to take a look at the spaces only and pretend like we're doing a little word search. So if I just circle up right here, reading from the top, or from the bottom to the top, you can see that the spaces spell out face. It works out perfectly. They even made it so it rhymes with space. So if it's on the space, it spells face. Now, E, G, B, D, F, Egbedif is not a word in any language that I know, unfortunately. So you can use a couple different sayings to help you remember the lines in the treble clef. So some of the sayings are, every good band does fine. You could say, every good bird does fly. Some other ones that I've heard are every girl buys designer fashion. Um, every good boy does fine. Some silly ones are Elvis goes belly dancing Fridays. And one of my personal favorites is empty garbage before dad flips. So using face and EGBDF or every good bird does fly, you're going to pick one of your favorite sayings for the lines just to help you but this never ever changes. So if there's a note here on the bottom line, it will always be an E when you're reading in the treble clef. So let's go ahead and practice reading these notes here that I've drawn on the staff. So this first note here, this one is on a line. So this is line one. It's sitting on line two. And for the lines, we're going to say every good bird does fly. So this would be every good bird does fly. So this is sitting on the good line, which starts with a G. So this note right here is going to be G. The second note here is sitting in a space. And the rhyme goes, if it's on the space, it spells face. So it would spell up from the bottom, F-A-C-E. 
C. Anything in this space right here is going to be a C. So we'll go ahead and write that in. This next one here is on the line. It's on the top line. So we said every good bird does fly. So this is going to be an F. And here we have a note on the first line, which is just going to be every. So this is going to be an E. Now I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that you can really understand how to read this music and how it works. I would relate not being able to read music as if you were going to like a German class or a class on Chinese or Japanese and not having a clue how to read or speak Japanese or trying to take a test. We would fail miserably and we would not have very much fun. So it's so important. Even if you don't take out the instrument, take out your book, start naming notes. And I really encourage you not to write in the name of a note over a note. It's just a crutch that's going to slow down your learning in the long term. So practice hard and let me know if you have any questions. You can always feel free to email me at lessons at bertransmusic.com. Thanks guys. Thank <laughs> you.